Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Climate change and the need to manage diminishing fossil fuel reserves are totally two of the biggest challenges facing the planet. In order to secure the future for ourselves and generations to follow, we must act now to reduce energy consumption and substantially cut greenhouse gases. Joining us now is Femi Oye, a man who wears many green hats and is disrupting conventional thinking around carbon trading and climate change in Africa. As the CEO of Green Energy and Biofuels, co-founder of SME Funds and chief architect of Go Solar Africa. Also on the program is Victor Alagbe, Vice President Blockchain Strategy at One Watt Solar. Good morning, sirs. Welcome to The Morning Show. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Good, Good morning. To you. It's great to Good have to you. See you. Well, it's interesting to see that uh, you guys are working in the area of renewable energy, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big issue now. I mean, the riots in France, uh, the recent riots yeah. over fuel price mm -hmm. tax and all that, it's over this renewable energy thing. And the EU has a policy about expanding the scope of uh, renewable energy in Europe. So, but Nigeria also has uh, some kind of renewable energy plan, right? Absolutely. Master plan, renewable right. energy master plan. What do you think of that plan, under which Nigeria hopes to reduce, you know, reliance on hydrocarbons, fossil fuels by 2030? Do you think Nigeria is serious, or you just think government is just making promises and the real area of action is in the hands of you guys in the private sector? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think that should be the right direction. So the difference between what we have today and what is going to exist tomorrow is actually just a thin line between our mind and the perspective that we share about the, the issue. Uh, the future is likely going to be driven wirelessly. It's going to be driven through different kind of technology. And uh, when we talk about renewable energy, we are looking at how do we change the narrative and create new narrative or new experience using very simple, non-complicated means to address those bonjourning, complicated problems that we've had. So Nigeria signed into the Paris Agreement, mm -hmm. and I think uh, three issues came out of that where we're talking about agriculture, how do we advance that? That is under the national uh, determined contribution that I think um, President Buhari already ascended to. And we is also a good uh, direction. And apart from agriculture, we are also looking at how do we fight poverty, reduce inequality, provide health care to people. And the third one happens to be renewable energy. And uh, Nigeria currently generates and we supply our population with less than 50 to 20 percent of what is actually needed. Lagos State alone would need approximately 100,000 megawatts hmm. of electricity. And in the entire Nigeria, we're talking about less than five, less than 4,000 megawatts that is generated. So the, everything that we actually have in the country today is not enough to power a standard airport, international airport, and that is what has been given across. So what would tomorrow look like? And that is why the world leaders and scientists, the engineers have found that, that going conventional way is actually not going to be able to power the future. An average African have two mobile phones. So that means that if we need one kilowatt 10, 15 years ago, so the same kind of energy generation that we have yesterday will not be able to cater for that tomorrow. So that is why we need to begin to look at new technology in which wind, solar, other types of renewable is actually part of what is going to be needed. And the cycle from design to building the plant and distributing or even utilization is shorter so to connect two cities with national grid mm -hmm. is going to take approximately 18 months to two years to be able to do that. But with solar, within three months, even sometimes a month, you have been able to build, install, and also create real electricity or energy for economies 
to grow. So we need speed. So time is running out. And we also need to start thinking about the planet, climate change, and every other issue. Well, I, I, I wanted you to uh, do a critique of government policy. That's why I drew attention to the Renewable Rural Energy Master Plan. Okay. What is the attitude of government? Because one of the issues, uh, we discussed this subject earlier, the uh, conference in uh, Poland on okay. climate change that's okay. starting that's on December 2, the report by uh, the UN uh, Intergovernmental Panel on uh, Climate Change, you know, the, what they usually talk about in many of those reports is about leadership. So what is the level of leadership? And maybe you will address that. Because when Nigerians talk about renewable energy, mm. what you hear from governors particularly is how oh, they've done street lights mm. using solar panel. That's calm. And the, the thing is just like a demonstration. Mm. And it ends there. Okay, most of the people who use solar panels as source of electricity, they are elites mm. because it's very expensive, yes, the yes. cost. Okay, so where are we? Both at the level of leadership and also in terms of the market. Um, I'll say, um, most part, we are seems to be like you said, um, leaning towards doing stuff in the renewable energy space from um, government. But like you said, um, they, there is still a general apathy to what people or what government believe that renewable energy can do in powering uh, the ecosystem. So most likely, what people have seen solar do is straight lights, and then you think, can I really power a whole house with solar? And so maybe the people that make those decisions are not really convinced that this will solve um, the energy generation problem. And so as much as they try to do, uh, make efforts to put policies in place to, to promote this, it's probably not going to be as um, comprehensive as what a private sector-driven initiative would do. Because of course, um, government needs to allocate resources to competing needs and ends part-time and perhaps at this point in time that there are not many proven solutions of uh, renewable energy delivering actual energy that people can use. There is that um, apathy towards it. But um, companies like ours and the private sector uh, doing stuff in the renewable energy space as we deliver our products and it's becoming more obvious that uh, renewable energy can power your own, power businesses, power industries and, and stuff. Then I think the narrative starts changing from the um, general sense of apathy into saying, okay, I think there is um, government saying there is stuff here and we should support this industry mm. the more. I read just, somewhere just that you said climate change problems is good for business, mm. right? Okay, talk to us about that. Okay, yeah, so um, we need to also understand that there is a new kind of thinking mm. for us to make leadership work, for us to make progress something that is an everyday thing. So the pace at which we attained where we are today is not going to take us into that future. Uh, we can look at climate change, because we, we talked about oil or post-oil regime for, for Nigeria, that, okay, with the abundance of crude deposit that we have in Nigeria, um, why should we be thinking about renewable or alternative? Why should we be lowering carbon emission? Mm. Why should we move away from oil when developed countries apparently used and developed all their economies based on hydrocarbons? So it's now time for Africa to, like Nigeria, that have a deposit of gas, a deposit of petroleum or hydrocarbon, and they are saying we should move away from it. So we could see this as a cause or a blessing. So in the case of Nigeria, with a huge deposit, how many billion, about 35 billion metric tons mm. of hydrocarbon deposit? We have over 6 or 5.6 trillion metric tons of deposit of gas. But has this been a blessing to us? No, because we take all the crude, all the raw material, we ship them out and we are buying and subsidizing expensive parts. So it's a cost, actually. So we can also take that vis-a-vis -vis -vis climate change. So what is the cost of cutting it down? What is the cost of fighting it? So it will be easier for us to just live our life, to assume that we're going to die today, than for us to actually be thinking about the generation yet unborn. So climate change today, it's a blessing if we are able to tackle it, use the right technology, 
So in Nigeria, what we've also been able to create is what we call Chinese Development Mechanism, okay. which is the CDM now. Okay. We just use the acronym Chinese because in the last 15 years, I think it was uh, President Jonathan then, the first of all tap into that. And uh, of course, successive government has also been able to participate at the global discourse, at COP meetings, where we sign the, the agreement and we've also ratified that. So over the years, we found out that 90% of the revenue that has been set aside to help developing economies, to actually leapfrog, overcome all their immediate challenges, have enough resources to develop so that they won't be thinking of going the way of pollution again towards driving their economy. So we signed this. However, we are not participating. So every year, China government make billions of dollars from this same fund. It's like the sovereign wealth fund that is set aside by the global body to help developing economy. But China, followed by India, they've actually connived legitimately to take more than 90% of this fund. Every LED light that you see in Nigeria, Chinese government have hand carbon credit on them. All the TVs, every new technologies that mm. we use here, Chinese government is earning. So what are we doing? And we can't earn anymore because we're only consuming. Mm. So rather than just focusing on consumption, we should also be looking at creating that. And that's what my organization have been able to do over the years that we've been able to gather women together yeah. to also hand this, but through a different mechanism. I saw your voluntary. C is it the seed transformation program? Is that the okay, one no. for the women? No, that, 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 that's actually well, China, China and Brazil are ahead, you know, in terms of helping to reduce green, uh, gas greenhouse emissions. gas emissions. And they've, had, they've been given credits, as you said, for helping to peak mm. uh, gas emissions. But let me come back to you. How much demand do you have for solar energy, which is what you manage, right, um, in terms of the market in Nigeria, considering the level of education, the level of awareness, and considering the cost? Because I keep making this point about cost, mm -hmm. and I would like you to respond to that, you know, that connection between cost and demand. Okay. Um, so, um, like uh, Mr. Femi said, in reality, the um, actual energy generation in Nigeria is Negligible, neg uh, negligible in relation to uh, the demand, just about 5,000 megawatts in relation to more than 100,000 just on, on paper, right? But the reality is, like as you said, is most people cannot afford to pay for solar energy infrastructure. Even when they can afford to pay for it, they are not comfortable and familiar enough with the technology to make those investments. What, what solar is doing is an energy as a service model that they risk the adoption of solar energy for our customers. So the customers don't pay upfront for the system. So that makes it easier for them to um, transition away from the traditional model of using um, power, fossil fuel powered generators um, and try out clean energy. That's one. Um, in terms of um, the demand, the demand is actually very huge. Um, the off grid market report by um, Google 2018 uh, places the demand for. Uh, renewable energy in Nigeria at 43 million households right now. And so, of course, you could say because of the cost, uh, many of these people will not be able to afford it and all of that. But based on our energy as a service model, when you are not paying for the infrastructure, you are just paying to access the energy. In, essence, in essence, you are paying for the energy that the system generates and not the system in itself. It's be, it costs down the cost significantly for the end users. Let me ask you, you talked about carbon credits, and that's what uh, your organization does, right? Uh, so you earn carbon credits. But a lot of environmental crusaders say this is just a false um, solution to emissions, going emissions. UNED reports just yesterday said that uh, after three years of a halt, we have seen increased emissions, greenhouse emissions. So how, how, what do you say to these people who actually think carbon credits are not working. These are not the solution to climate change. Yeah, so I would not want to argue in that direction because mm -hmm. most of the time, not until you participate and you fully understand what mechanisms or what brought about the mechanism that is in place, because carbon credit on its own will not solve the entire problem. But we've seen over the years that um, we've been able to achieve some good measure of 
acceleration because it's like subsidy, it's like incentives that is actually set aside. So you go to China, like we've said today, you see every 63 to 90 days, they launch new power plants. Mm -hmm. They are breaking down the entire economy, the entire ecosystem. They are building clusters whereby people can become more productive. And as they're doing this, don't forget, there is a natural inclination for human beings. As your economic power increases, you want to acquire new gadgets, you need more sophistication. And as this continues to grow, the demand for energy would de grow over the years. In our office, we got a 2018 LG TV. Maybe I'm not promoting LG now. <laughs> that actually takes and consumes less than 30 watts. The big TV screen. Mm. But the same TV that we got, 2016 version of it, actually consumed about 85 watts. You can see within one year, look at the level of efficiency that we've gotten. It's over 200%. However, because the efficiency is increasing and energy demand is going, uh, coming down, people have the tendency of acquiring more appliances. So when you look at what the re uh, researchers actually put out there, that carbon credit has been a failure, it has played its own part. Of course, we are moving gradually away just from carbon credit and incentive because there is a time that you need to now stop the subsidy or stop the incentives and allow market to actually Anyway, I mean, the major message, yes. the major message from UNEP or IPPC or other experts is they need to do more. More, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the need for promises to be kept and for leadership to be provided. But this is not just about leadership. Mm. What's your assessment of the level of buying by businesses? Because there's a government side, there's also a business side. Mm -hmm. What's the level of buying by businesses in Nigeria? So it, it makes not just... Um, um, political sense is also making the economic sense today. So businesses are able to cut down cost of running business by literally going solar. You see a lot of solar installation massively going on in Nigeria today, thanks to the administration currently through RAA, they have actually brought in a lot of innovative ways by which they can stimulate the market. So companies today, like banks, powering their ATM machines. We also have uh, telecommunication companies as well approaching us because we have a national association called uh, AMDA, so African Mini Grid Developers Association for Nigeria. They have approached us that they actually want to power their mass because they burn tons, tons, 10,000 of tons of diesel every month. So they want to lower their, their cost. So that's an economic sense. So for businesses, like in all our own facility across the country, we power 100% renewable. So we can take that off the cost of, of doing business. So we will say that uh, the momentum is not really there yet because of the cost that it actually takes to acquire the infrastructure, the technology itself, and because of the minimal cost on maintenance, so it's just a beautiful idea. So we have more businesses now coming into renewable, and in the future, we've projected that to grow very rapidly. Well, right. thank you very much, uh, family, and thank you to uh, Victor, Alagbe, Victor uh, for coming to the morning show. Thank, thank you, you so much. Really interesting. I hope mm -hmm. that the demand uh, increases, yeah. and our cost will also go down. Yeah, through the Nigerians blockchain technology. Embrace, yeah. You know, renewable energy for the health of the environment. Yeah, there's a lot uh, for of our own safety. Too. I know. I was actually That's going nice. to ask a real quick question about you know a lot of countries in Europe are you know getting rid of um, uh, petrol cars, and I saw that you did the electric tricycle. Oh yes, sir. and I was very impressed by that. Thank but you, that's a subject for another day. Thank Very you. good job. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It's time now for a short break on the morning show.